Good evening, campers. It is me, Kira. And today we are going to talk about Volashila Grav by Serhi Zhidan. Originally published in 2010 and has been translated from the Ukrainian to the English by Riley Costigan Hughes and Isaac Stackhouse Wheeler. Volashila Grav was my first venture into Serhi Zhidan's writing. He is not only a novelist but a poet and a musician and this book in particular won the BBC's Ukrainian Book of the Year Award. Alongside that he has had international praise and has been heralded as one of Ukrainian's foremost young writers. His most recent work to be published, his most recent, his most recent novel to be published in English came out this year in 2021 and that is The Orphanage of which I have reviewed and will leave a link down below. This came out in 2017 in the original Ukrainian and though there be seven years between them I'm going to be quite reductive and say that Zhidan is focused on one thing and that is is Ukraine able to break free from the USSR and Voroshil Grav as a title is interesting because we're going to talk about our main character Herman returning to his home town that town when Ukraine was occupied by the Soviet Union was called Voloshilograv. Today it is Luhansk, which makes up one of the areas in the Donbass region of Ukraine, which is on the eastern border. Why does Herman need to return to Luhansk? Well, he gets a phone call from one of the employees of his brother's gas station, Koshka, who breaks the news saying that his brother's gone and, well, someone needs to sort out the gas station. And feeling that it is his duty, reluctantly, Herman goes there. And we really are dealing with this gas station. The Donbass area is known for its oil and still in recent times there have been disputes between Ukraine and Russia over their natural resources. Dealings between the Ukrainian oil and gas company NAFTA has and the Russian oil and gas company Gazprom have gone beyond business disputes and this is now a contentious political issue between them. Does Herman sell the gas company just to get it away from him so he doesn't have to deal with it or does he hold on to it because it stands for something more? Maybe and having a political based oil dispute within a novel isn't the best way to sell it. So why do we just add some gangs into it? Yes, Herman is visited by a gang who just wants it off him. And Herman feels as though, well, yeah, like, why not? And slowly things turn sour. And maybe Herman shouldn't make rash decisions. Throughout this novel, Jadan is asserting that Russia has a huge impact on Ukraine and that really the characters can't escape this. Yes, we've already made reference to the title, but even outside of Voloshila Grav or Luhansk, Herman, when he starts this story, has a tough old landlord called Fyodor Mikhailovich and they call him Dostoevsky because they share the same first name and patronym. This landlord, this Fyodor, is not Russian, yet still. Dostoevsky will plague him. Additionally, to follow on from that and my dislike for this book, a lot of this feels forced. Yes, the landlord has to be called Dostoevsky, a clear reference to Dostoevsky's Raskolnikov who wants to kill the landlord because they have a lot of money and they're corrupt. Like, we get this and throughout the novel, there's a lot of forced, just real, real forced things to happen. And I get why it happens, because you have this ghostly presence of the Soviet Union that kind of blankets this area. But I wasn't expecting some ghosts to turn up and play football. I think it's trying to be satirical, or at least farcical in its nature, that scene. But it's, it's a bit like watching a car crash, like, Oh, are you, are you still right in Jadan? Are you still right in this scene? Oh, okay. And then you have like 400 pages left to go of the, the clunkiest writing. Uh, like, really, 
really clunky. Now, that could be the translator. That could be the translation. It feels really weird to me that Jadan, who is a poet, and even on the back says that this is poetic, expressive prose that marks of a literary rock star, is writing in this way. I, it feels too blatant for it to be just the translators. I just didn't like this book. I just didn't like this book. I detest this book. And I'm not one to ever say, this book took me X amount of days, therefore I think the quality is good, or therefore the quality is bad. I don't think that's like a fair judgment, but, but this, this book took me three months because it's just so boring. It's just boring. I try doing like 30 page chunks and after like a half hour of reading I'd got through say five to ten pages. I was just there going, I don't care. I don't care enough for any of this. And I think you can spend, I think I could have spent three months doing anything. Lay Miz took me three months. I didn't enjoy Lay Miz. This is like, like a quarter of the size. And it took me the same amount of time. I, I, I struggled. I just grew tired of the force. Ooh, look at Russia, look what Russia's doing. Russia's doing this thing. I, come on, come on. Stop it, stop it. For me, the Russian book of the decade is a one out of 10. But luckily for you, if you click that link down below, if you made it this far, this book, his most recent one, I understand where the accolades are coming from with this. I understand, so click that link below and I will see you in some time. Bye.